<laughs> Guys, look, it's not just about openings. In fact, knowing openings alone won't really help to improve your chess. So what I'm going to do in today's video is to give you a practical example through a live game that I'm going to play. And at the end of this video, I'm going to give you a secret of improving your rating so fast. Or in other words, I'm going to give you a clear study plan to help you level up as soon as possible. So spoiler, what I'm going to do in the game that I'm about to play is breaking one opening principle that says do not develop your queen very early in the opening stage. In fact, I'm going to do that on move number two. I'll break as many principles as I can just to make a point you guys and then I'll explain to you the real secret behind these things. So let's start with the game first. Right, so here we go. I'm playing against a 2231 rated opponent and e4 e5 on the board knight to f3 yeah so let me go queen f6 just breaking one of the opening principles that says do not develop your queen early in the opening stage so queen f6 now we see knight c3 i guess white wants to play knight d5 next let me play something like queen b6 or queen e7 you know i just want to break as many principles as i can I know these are not the perfect moves, but there's a point that I want to make. Bishop c4, I think let me go queen c5, just to surprise my opponent. Point to d3, which other queen move can I make? Maybe queen a5, you know, protecting my e5 pawn. Castle shot by white. Okay, so what other move? Maybe queen b6. I just want to keep on breaking these opening principles and show you that I can still come up with something, you guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to win, but there's a point that I want to make. There we see bishop e3. So bishop c5 is a tactical move, you guys, because I mean, I just want to, you know, simplify the game. But if knight takes e5 happens, I'm just going to take white's bishop on e3. Sorry, uh, let's say knight takes e5, bishop takes e3, and then I'll win a free knight on e5. So that's just a tactical move, although white has bishop takes f7 or knight takes f7 anyways queen d2 bishop takes then pawn takes so pawn to d6 let me go d6 oh knight to f6 yeah knight to f6 next i want to castle short putting my king to safety and i'm still protecting my e5 pawn as you can see there we see knight g5 i can just castle short so everything is well defended. You can see I didn't do anything crazy. I didn't follow any opening principles or whatever. I violated many rules and many chess principles in the opening stage. H6, harassing that knight. So white should retreat, I guess. Yep, knight f3. And then what else? D6, just solidifying my pawn structure on the center, supporting my e5 pawn. Knight h4, I guess the plan is to go knight f5, but I have bishop takes, so I can just go pawn to c6, paving way for my queen. I want my queen to sit on c7 someday. c6 stops knight d5 and knight b5, by the way. There we see knight f5, I can just take. Getting rid of that monster knight, and now, yeah, knight bd7, and then queen c7 next. Pawn to d5 is coming, and pawn to d4. There we see rook f3. I think I can now play a uh, rook rook a d8 yeah supporting my knight on d7 or queen c7 maybe what should i do <laughs> okay rook a d8 supporting my knight on d7 first before playing pawn to d5 okay i guess my king's knight is under attack somehow so let me just play king h8 avoiding any future pins or tactics so king h8 is safer according to my eyeballs okay rook f1 to d5 now breaking through the center so my idea is to go d4 if white allows okay pawn takes yes pawn takes d4 is coming still uh, what is that e4 i think let me just open up the d file for my queen's rook so d takes and now i have a semi-open file for my queen's rook yeah, d takes e4 now. Let me give him a check. Or maybe queen c7. Is it? Or maybe knight. Yeah, knight c5. Attacking the light squad bishop. This is the way to simplify the game, by the way. Yeah, this is a very tricky move, by the way. Once again, I just want to take the light squad bishop and 
protect my queen indirectly. There we see bishop d5. I don't believe in this. Something looks fishy here. I can just take the bishop, right? Or maybe play a tactical move. Yeah, I can see a tactical move here, like queen b6. They're preparing for a nasty discovery. Something like knight takes e4, check, discovery check. And these are some kinds of tactics that most of your opponents won't see coming. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, you guys. So, yeah, queen takes e5 is a blunder because of knight d3 check. Open check, by the way. Yeah. So, this is game over. Knight d3, open check. So, my queen is checking white's king. And indirectly, I'm attacking the queen on e5 with my knight. So, this is how I win most of my games, you guys. At times, I just play chess and wait for my opponent to blunder and make mistakes. So, despite violating the opening principles, I still managed to confuse my opponent and end up winning his queen this way. So now I'm going to give you a big secret behind these things. So don't skip this video, watch up to the end. You skip at your own risk. Yeah, so my opponent just resigned after wasting my time waiting. <laughs> Anyways, by the way, there was even a very funny smothered mate I was preparing. If white played king h1, e.g. if king h1 was played instead of taking the queen right away i can also go knight f2 check in some positions by the way especially if white's rook is not on f1 but this is also fine let me just show you what i'm talking about in case of king g1 i was just simply going to play knight h3 double check a very common tactic so white's king has to move and then it's time for you guys to guess the right move in this position let's go Right, if you were not able to find queen g1 check, I suggest you start working on your tactics. The thing is, white's king can't take on g1 because our knight is supporting our queen. So if rook takes, now this is when I would have played knight f2 checkmate. How do I know this? Because I remember solving a chess puzzle that went like this under the topic smothered checkmates and that's the importance of solving chess puzzles now time for the secret you guys so you might need to get your pen and notebook for this if you really want to learn something deep let's go so what am i even saying point number one it's not just about knowing openings alone in fact studying openings is like the third or the last thing you want to consider as a beginner because firstly Chess is 99% tactics, as Susan Poga once said. What does that mean? Well, this is the view that 99% of all chess games are won from outright tactics, as you saw from the game that I just played, and not lasting positional domination or grinding a win from a positional advantage. In fact, most games don't even end by checkmating. People just resign after missing or miscalculating a simple tactical shot. That's how I lose most of my games, by the way. In fact, here is what I like doing in most serious tournaments. If I'm playing against a lower rated player, or say an 1800, 1700, 1500, 1300, what I do is this. I just play chess. I forget about my gambits, tricks. I also forget about some dubious traps, etc. I just play traditional chess, normal chess, and wait for my opponent to make a mistake or to blunder, as I always say. When you play good chess and continue attacking, it's not you who is going to checkmate your opponent, it's them who are going to make a mistake or blunder. So I just play chess and let the difference tell in the middle game. And how does that difference come about? It all comes down to tactics, the way an advanced player is able to come up with certain tactical shots, playing indirect moves through the use of clearance sacrifices, positional sacrifices, and other middle game principles. It all comes down to how you apply those principles, looking for decoys, strategic sacrifices, desperado moves. That's what differentiates you from inexperienced players who just make moves trying to checkmate your king. And you don't just improve your tactical skills by eating pizza <laughs> or by eating cucumbers. You improve your tactical skills by solving chess puzzles and other chess tactics. For example, endgame tactics, mate in 2, mate in 3, mate in 4, those will acquaint you to several ways of defeating your opponents. And again, the other benefit of solving chess tactics 
and puzzles is that you learn to depend on your intuition rather than memorizing opening moves. So the biggest word in this first point is tactics, solve tactics. So what are chess tactics? Well, tactics are maneuvers that take advantage of short-term opportunities involving combinations or sacrifices, just like I mentioned earlier on, like positional sacrifices, clearance sacrifices, decoys, interceptions, closing lines, etc. But then there's a small group of people that say chess is not 99% tactics or 100% calculation. They claim it's 100% judgment and evaluation that if you don't calculate, how do you come up with the 100% judgment, whatever. Anyway, to some extent that is true. Also your decision making skills plays a vital role. But again, you develop your judgmental skill and evaluation by practicing more of tactics. Because the more you practice, the more your brain becomes mature. I mean, when it comes to making judgments, you will start seeing things differently. Anyway, speaking of playing good chess to wait for your opponent to make a mistake, I like one of Gary Kasparov's quotes that says, the winner of the game is just <laughs> the player who made the next two last mistake. What that means is, it's not about playing a perfect game. Usually, both players do make mistakes and inaccuracies, but it only turns out that the loser is the person who made the last mistake. Hope you understand that. So it's not like you have to play a perfect game throughout for you to win the overall game. Most of the times the game will just be decided by the person who makes the last mistake. So the question is, are you able to see that mistake? Moving on, point number two, apart from tactics, we talk of chess principles. You have to study chess principles. But to summarize this, let me use Gary Kasparov's quote once again. He once said, to be good at chess, you need to learn how to apply the basic principles of chess. But to be great at chess, you need to know how to break those principles, when to break them, how to break them, and how to recover from the worst. That's what will differentiate you from beginners. So it's not every time that you need to be following these basic principles. Sometimes following a good middle game principle or a good opening principle may cost you a game, by the way, in case you didn't know. It can make you lose. Because in chess, there's another concept that masters know well. It's called the superseding concept. <laughs> What is this? See, in chess, the concept of superseding typically refers to the idea that certain strategies or principles may take precedence over others in specific situations. For instance, while controlling the center and developing pieces are fundamental principles, there are times when tactical opportunities or positional considerations may supersede these basic principles. This means that a player might need to prioritize certain strategic or tactical ideas over others based on the specific circumstances of the game. This reminds me of what one of my training partners told me before going into the tournament. I said, you know what, I don't know what my opponent is going to play and I don't know the opening that I should play. I mean, I just don't know what to do on the chessboard. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he said, you know what? Just focus on the board, respond to your opponent's threats, create your own threats and play chess. In other words, he just advised me to solve what I see on the board, not remembering any principle, any opening or whatever, just solving what I see on the board using my brain capacity like 100%. That's what he told me. And you know what? I took that advice seriously that it improved my rating from 1800 up to 1942 in just two OTB tournaments alone before I went back to school to pursue other studies. So remember, while well, chess principles are good, but there's a time when you need to grow up and stop entirely depending on the ABCs those principles. So to be good at chess, you need to learn how to apply the basic principles, but to be great at it, <laughs> you need to know how to break those principles. Moving on, after studying tactics, point number three, pick your role model. Someone like Kasparov, Bobby Fischer, Magnus Carlsen, ETC, but don't just pick any model. Pick someone who suits your style of playing, someone you would love to start copying. For example, if it is Magnus Carlsen, then start studying his games. This might be a good time for you to start studying chess openings. 
and only one or two openings are enough just two openings yes you can study other openings just for the sake of knowing but if you want to specialize in an opening just pick one or two that's all so this is when you start studying to specialize in one specific opening that your role model plays very well for example if you want to study the dutch you start looking at ginger gm's games i guess that's grandmaster simon william or simon williams so you begin studying his games how he plays his dutch defense so those are just spoilers i'm giving you guys and that's gonna help you and then lastly you continue playing your over the board games you play more of longer time matches over the board imitating your role models or imitating the openings that you are studying play more longer time control matches over the board this is just different from playing online you guys the board dimension and the experience is very different you guys even the emotions cause in over the board games everything is involved your emotions your energy your psychology your preparation everything your eyeballs you are able to see things clearly and you have space while when you're playing on your smartphone it's just you and your thumb <laughs> and your nose anyway and at last you realize that all of those things you studied way back like tactics superseding concepts chess principles will just be coming automatically in your vision they will become part of you that's why i'm able to play 30 seconds bullet chess perfectly without making a lot of blunders and mistakes because these things have become somehow part of me so in conclusion here is your study plan as a beginner first step is to focus on knowing the rules this includes understanding the chess pieces the different boxes on the chess board and how the pieces move next you need to learn how to set up a board etc then step number two once you are acquainted with knowing the rules start practicing at this point it's not a good time to learn about chess openings no just start playing whatever just start playing on leeches on chess.com or wherever you want to test your skills make as many mistakes as you want just start playing at that stage what you are doing is noticing or learning the movements of pieces and how everything is going how your opponents are responding where to put the knight how the knight moves how the bishop moves so that's step number two practice those rules practice the rules then step number three this is when you want to start practicing tactics like mating two mating three and game tactics chess puzzles so you start solving those random puzzles at least by now you are acquainted with how the moves are made how the pieces move so now on step number three take a break away from chess and then you just start solving chess puzzles tactics you continue with that whenever you have time of course you can play one or two games but tactics are different from games so just solve tactics they are boring yes but they really help in building your intuition so study tactics bah, 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 bah. that was step number three and then step number four after tactics i advise that you begin studying chess principles all of them like opening principles middle game principles and end game principles if you want to learn about chess principles follow me on patreon where you can join membership to any of my tiers i have posted tens of the most important chess principles that will help you improve your chess so simply go to my patreon page casper chess official the links are in the comment section down below and begin studying those chess principles as simple as that done that was step number four so after studying chess principles step number five this is when you can pick your role model and start studying their openings okay you start studying openings of your role model the one that suits your style of play you don't just study all the openings in the world oh you can do that at your own free time right just for fun and just to be acquainted but if you want to specialize in an opening pick one or two you study those openings of your role models that was step number five and then step number six go and mess up just go and play chess that's all play more of otb matches than online games that's where most of us are coming from like i used to play in barber shops at markets bars etc in the streets just for me to be where i am today so those are the six steps for you guys now of course while you are following these steps you can be playing your chess here and there but this is your study plan that i've given you for free you guys and to pay me for this just follow me on patreon get my free e5 defense course and check out my other courses that i have i mean this is all i can do for you for today until next
next time have a wonderful day you guys and let me know what you think in the comment section down below bye bye